G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as the countdown for the 2023 AFL Draft marches on. Today, we're going to be taking a bit of a retrospective look at the last 10 drafts, right? So uh, as you may know, if you've been following the channel, what I've been doing is going back and having a lot of uh, retrospective looks at previous drafts and how they've gone. So while I've been in this little rabbit hole, I suppose, I thought it'd be a fun exercise to go back and look at the last 10 years of drafts dating back to 2013 and having a look at the best draft hauls in a given year by each club in the AFL. Obviously in previous content, I've been looking at the best individual picks, but sometimes it's best to look at the entire haul of a particular draft. And the patterns have been interesting. So like well, over the last 10 years, there's been a lot of clubs who haven't really been active at the pointy ends of drafts. You know, Richmond, Geelong, West Coast, and to some extent Hawthorne as well, are all clubs that haven't had great picks. So to different extents, like it's been really easy to find clubs who have had one great draft because they've had really good access to picks. And for other clubs, it's been a little bit more even. Sometimes they'll just pick a gem here in one given draft, then they'll pick another one later. Um, so doing this was a little bit tricky, but I think I have done a pretty well-rounded job. I could be wrong, it's pretty hard. So uh, as always, I welcome your input in the comment section below if you disagree with anything. The other interesting thing is it's not always the year where clubs have the best picks. Uh, where they do the best in the draft. Sometimes where clubs are really made or broken to some extent is their ability to draft really well late in drafts as we'll get into. Before we get into it, guys, over the last couple of months, I have been setting a goal of trying to get the amount of people who watch my videos, at least half of them subscribe to the channel. This is the closest I've ever seen us to getting to that 50% mark. We're at about 49.8. So if you do me a favor, if you're someone who watches the channel and you are enjoying the content, but you found you haven't actually hit subscribe yet, it would mean a lot to me if you did. All right, so without further ado, we'll crack into each club's best draft haul from the last 10 years. And surprise, surprise, I'm gonna go alphabetically starting with the Adelaide Crows. Now, this is another one that was a little bit tricky. It wasn't completely obvious to pick out one particular year. There was a couple, and I was deciding between 2020 and 2021. So I'll ultimately decide on 2020, where they took Riley Thilthorpe at pick two. They then added Luke Pedler with a mid-first round selection with pick 11. Braden Cook at 25, Sam Berry at 28, and James Rowe later on with 38 as well. So you've got a long-term key position forward there that still looks pretty good. Again, it's early days for a lot of these prospects. Luke Pedler looks like a gun to me, and Sam Berry has done pretty well with the 30-odd uh, games that he's played at AFL level. I think it's 39. I did also consider the haul where they got Rochelle and Saligo, uh, but this one, I think they had a few more hits, and it does help that it was their best draft hand. I think this was the year they won the wooden spoon and took Riley Thilthorpe first. Then we've got the Brisbane Lions, and you could argue just off the surface level, you'd probably go with last year where they got Will Ashcroft at pick two and Jasper Fletcher at pick 12. However, for the sake of mixing it up a little bit, I'll point out 2016 where they did actually really well across the two drafts. So Hugh McCluggage went at pick three, Jared Berry at pick 17 was a solid pick. Obviously, he's still the best 22 player for them. Witherden at 23 and Cox at 24. These were not so much hits. Witherden was an okay player for them, but then eventually... Uh, moved to West Coast, but they did take Oscar McInerney with pick 37 of the rookie draft this year. So to add McCluggage, Berry, and McInerney in one hit, that was probably what I would say as their best draft haul. So for some clubs, this was tricky to do. For Carlton, it was exceptionally easy. They had one amazing draft in 2016, where they took Jacob Wiedering at the number one pick overall. They took Harry Mackay at pick 10, and they took Charlie Kerno at pick 12. So they've basically built a potentially premiership quality spine, in my opinion. is one of the best young key backs in the comp. I don't know if you could say he's young anymore, but he's a very good player. And Mackay and Kerno have both won Coleman's. They later added Cunningham at 24 and Silvani at 53. But if you just said the first three picks, this was arguably one of the best draft hauls in this entire video. Collingwood, the reigning premiers are up with the 2014 draft is what I would suggest. So pick five, they took Jordan Dugowie. Again, a little bit of a leap and it wasn't a unanimous yes, Dugowie is the next best pick available in this draft. They took a punt on him and he's become an absolute star. They were kind of gifted a father-son in Darcy Moore, but nonetheless, he went at pick nine. So I'm counting this as a the draft haul, of course. And then at pick 30, they weren't quite done yet. They had a Braided Maynard, who was, of course, a premiership halfback flanker and has been a good best 22 player for them for as long as I can remember, probably since he's been drafted. So to add three premiership players in one hit, Collingwood did really well in 2014. Essendon, by contrast, I found this one of the trickier ones to differentiate which one I thought was their best haul. So in 2020, they had three top 10 picks in Cox, Perkins, and Reed. 
It's a little bit early to assess on that. I think they've picked pretty well. So I decided to look back a little bit further and I'd probably isolate 2015 where they took Darcy Parrish at pick five, Aaron Francis went at pick six. Obviously he's at a different club now. Alex Morgan at 29, Mason Redmond though, another best 22 player, a quality player at that at pick 30. And then to top that off, I think the difference maker for me in between this and 2016 was that they added Tipping Woody in the rookie draft who ended up playing 130 games for him and was a very, very good small forward. So the best 22 players they got out of that were Parrish, Redmond and Tip and Woody, and they also got you know some service out of Aaron Francis too. Fremantle was another one where I had to split between two halls. Uh, this was particularly tough. In 2019 to start, they got Sarong and Hayden Young with picks seven and eight. Sarong looks like one of the best young inside mids of the comp. Hayden Young it looks like a gun as well. But I'm gonna go back to 2016 and give them some credit for their late draft uh, picks that they had in this year. So pick eight, they took Griffin Logue. He's arguably the weakest of the, the four players they took in this draft, and he's now at North Melbourne, but it was still around the mark in their best 22. Sean Darcy at pick 38, Brennan Cox at 41, and Luke Ryan at pick 66. Luke Ryan is an All-Australian defender. Sean Darcy's around the mark for that, and Brennan Cox, I think he was around the mark for the squad this year, and they've just signed him up to a six or seven year deal as well, and a, a good underrated defender of the competition. So I think in terms of a mix, that was probably the year I think Fremantle did best. Then we got the Geelong Footy Club. Again, this one was tough because they obviously haven't had access to high picks at any point of the last 10 years. They haven't had any real high draft picks. And uh, funnily enough, the one I'm going to pick out for them as their best draft haul was a year they didn't even hold a first round selection. And that is 2016. Their first selection was pick 26 with Brandon Parfit. They added Tom Stewart at pick 40. And that says it all really. Tom Stewart at pick 40 is one of the best draft hits um, going. It, uh, probably, I think I redrafted him at pick one in the redraft. Asava Radaglia went at 43. He was a good, capable player for him. Nothing special, uh, and they didn't want to lose him to Port Adelaide. Later, they took a couple of later picks in Narkel, House, and Abbott. Uh, but then in the rookie draft, they really doubled down, and they added Jack Henry with pick 16 in that rookie draft, and then Zach Guthrie, who's around the mark for their best 22 as well, at pick 33. So that mix of players, headlined by Tom Stewart, is probably the year that Geelong did best. Then we're up to the two expansion clubs. This was actually tricky because they've had so much access to top talent. A lot of them were busts. A lot of them switch clubs. So while they probably picked good, talented players, I also wanted to keep in mind the impact they've actually had for their clubs. And for the Gold Coast Suns to start off, I probably have to go to 2018. They had three top six picks this year, and this was also one of the strongest drafts we've seen in a long time. So at pick two, they took Isaac Rankin. Yes, he's not at the club anymore, but he had some impact in his final year at Gold Coast. They ended up flipping him for Bailey Humphrey anyway. Jack Lacocious at pick three, I think is a good result for them. And when you add that, the best player of them all in Ben King at pick six, I'd have to say that they did particularly well this year. Pick 23 was Jez McLennan, and at 71, they took Graham as well. So another player that has played a number of games for them. And generally as a mix, I think Gold Coast did really well in 2018. Now, GWS was was tough. Uh, I decided against 2019 in the end because I thought 2016 just pipped it. So in 2019, they took Ash and Tom Green and then added Jake Riccardi uh, later at 51. But I decided that 2016 was probably better. At pick two, they took Tim Taranto. He won a best and fairest for them and then got traded for uh, two first round picks. I think it was to Richmond. So all in all, in terms of a draft hit, I think that's a successful one. Will Setterfield at pick five didn't really pan out, but they added Perryman at 14, Isaac Cumming, and then later in the draft, they added Matt DeBoer, who became, well, probably the best version of Matt DeBoer that we've seen at AFL level as one of the best taggers in the competition. So to do that at pick 58 was uh, was a really good get. Taranto, they picked not as an academy player. I will say that Setterfield, Perryman, and Cumming all were academy players, but again, we assess on the overall haul. This was probably the year GWS got the most value out of it. Then we've got the Hawthorne Football Club. Again, this one is tough because this is another team that hasn't had high draft picks for a number of years. And in for a number of years as well, they, they traded out of first rounds, getting Tom Mitchell, Jager O'Meara. They were successful through that period. So a lot of this draft success, I would argue, has come from more recent drafts. And I would also say that it's kind of an even spread as to where that talent's been. So um, there's a few to nominate here. Honestly, I would probably argue that their most recent draft in 2022 looks like the best. They had picks seven and 18, or they at least traded for 18, and they got Cam McKenzie and Josh Weddle. Hustwaite has also debuted for them. He was picked at pick 37. But if we're gonna look a little more retroactively, 
maybe 2019 where they took Will Day at pick 13, just because I think Will Day at pick 13 was a very good value selection. If I'm not mistaken as well, they kind of leapt a little bit early on Will Day. They were one of the clubs that saw his value. So I give them a lot of credit for that. Then they added a father son in Finn McGuinness at pick 29. But again, this one was tough to split. So I'm interested to see the perspective of Hawthorne fans in the comments. With the Melbourne Football Club, uh, I was split between two. I've ended up probably deciding on 2019, adding Luke Jackson, Cozzy Pickett, and Trent Rivers in this respective draft. Trent Rivers as well at pick 32 was a good value selection. All three of those played pretty important roles in their premiership side. You could point to 2014 and argue that Petrarca, Brayshaw, and Alex Neil Bullen, who are all premiership players for them, were probably a greater net profit, as it were. That's not the right term at all. Getting Petrarca as well as one of the best players in the competition, you'd argue that's probably probably the one. But I found this one really, really hard to split. Lou Jackson not being at the club anymore probably does sway it the other way. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below, but I found those two really hard to split. Then we got the North Melbourne Football Club, and this is another team who I think probably, from what we can see so far, it is early days, 2022 might be their best draft haul where they got Sheasel and Wardlaw last year added Braden George in the second round and Brent Harvey's son at pick 56. I will shout out a, a further one back as well, just for the purposes of this video. In 2016, they did have a very, very good draft haul and I'd probably actually go with this one in hindsight. Jai Simpkin went at pick 12, solid player, you know, an important player for North over the last few years. Declan Watson at 34 and Josh Williams at 36 weren't really hits, but when you factor in, they took Nick Larkey at pick 73 in this year's draft and Cam Zohar at pick 11 of the rookie draft, then you have to factor in that this was probably the best haul, considering we know enough about these players. It's too early to call on Sheez on the Wardlaw, so I'd say 2016 for North Melbourne. For Port Adelaide, this one was quite a simple one with 2018, even at the time, but even still to this day, even more so, being their best draft haul. So, Connor Rosie goes at pick five, and Zach Butters goes at pick 12. Dersma had a bright start to his career. He was in at pick 18. Obviously, he just switched clubs, kind of on the outer at Port Adelaide. But I think you don't even have to look too much further than Butters and Rosie in the same draft to get two top-line A-grade midfielders in the same first round. That's still pretty rare, and you have to give full props to Port Adelaide for picking those players. Then we got Richmond. This one was tricky because this is another team that hasn't had uh, a lot of success in early draft picks in the last 10 years, you'd have to say. A lot of their success was built maybe a little bit before that, some shrewd trading, but most particularly late draft picks. And this is where I'll highlight, I completely missed this in my rookie picks video, which I think in hindsight, I just rushed that video. So I'll correct that by putting in their 2014 rookie draft. So funnily enough, they took Dan Butler at pick 67 of the national draft. They then added all in the same rookie draft, Jaden Short at pick 11, Jason Castagna at pick 29, Kane Lambert at pick 46, and Ivan Soldo at pick 68. So me missing that in that rookie draft video is a bad blue by me. So I'll put my hands up there. So it's interesting that Richmond's best haul came from a year where four of the five picks were rookie uh, draft picks and all were premiership players to different extents and when I say different extents some of them were single uh, premiership players and others had won all three so to get five premiership players from a pick 67 and four rookie picks is unbelievable going from Richmond so kudos to them the St Kilda Football Club. Uh, this one, again, was hard to find a single draft haul that was outstanding. There was lots of hits and misses left, right, and center, to be honest. But I would highlight 2021 as a year that is looking very, very good, even after just two seasons. So at pick 11, they took Nazaya Wanganin Miller from Adelaide. He's become a very good halfback flanker for them. Then you factor in Machito Owens at pick 33 as an academy match bid and Marcus Windhager at pick 47. I think these were two very good value selections. Now, on the one hand, they are academy players, so that is a little bit of a caveat to giving Secure too much credit for this. Nonetheless, though, they have nurtured these talents. They've become very, very good players. And generally speaking, while I couldn't really find too many hits over the last 10 years for St. Kilda, I'd have to say that in the last few years, I think their drafting has been pretty good. And that all kicked off with 2021 with these three talents that I think will be long-term players for the Saints. Keeping on the academy trend, let's talk about the Sydney Swans, a team that has, let's say, let's be honest, it's benefited a lot from the academy system in recent times. The one year where I think they did best in the draft was in 2020. At pick four, they took Logan McDonald. Give them credit for that selection. I think that is a very, very good move 
for where their list is at, but also I think he's just a very, very good young key forward of the competition. At pick five, they matched a bid for Braden Campbell from Hawthorne, if I'm not mistaken, and he's become a good, reliable defender, part of their best 22, looking like a, a good draft hit that one. And then to a greater extent, Ero Golden was matched at pick 32. We all saw Golden have a breakout year this year and emerge as one of the better young midfielders of the competition. He finished really high in the Brownlow, much closer to winning it than we had all expected. And so as a, as a trio of players, McDonald, Campbell and Golden, Sydney would be stoked with this haul. Then we've got the West Coast Eagles, another team that uh, has traded out of drafts uh, historically a lot over the last 10 years. And uh, I'd say again, 2022 probably looking like early days, our best draft haul, adding Jinby, Hewitt, Barnett, Burgill, and then Noah Long at pick 58. I do think over time, this will stack up to be our best. Factor in though, this was also the earliest pick we've had in a long time. So to look a little bit more retrospectively at one where we did well without so many great picks. 2017, uh, they added Jared Brander at pick 13, which was a miss, it has to be said. But they did add Oscar Allen at pick 21. We all know how good Oscar Allen is. Liam Ryan would become an All-Australian player. He was picked at pick 26. Ainsworth at 32 didn't work out, but Petrocelli is still a best 22 player and a solid enough talent uh, long term. So I'd say 2017 is the best so far, but I'm hoping 2022 will prove to be better. And finally, the Western Bulldogs. This one, again, not super simple. I think their good draft picks have been scattered around in different drafts. There hasn't been one standout year where I think they absolutely nailed it. For instance, when they got Bontempelli in 2013, I don't think they got much out of that draft um, from memory. 2014 as well, they had a couple of late hits with Bailey Dale and Caleb Daniel, but not much before that. So the year that I think that the Western Bulldogs probably did best is 2017, where they had two first round draft picks, and I would argue they nailed both of them. Pick nine and Aaron Norton has become one of the best young key forwards at the comp. And then at pick 16, Ed Richards, who started his career like a house on fire, ebbed and flowed a little bit after that, but I think in 2023 emerged to be a very, very good running defender slash wingman. And I could see him potentially getting an all Australian jumper one day because he's on the right track as far as I'm concerned. Later they took Callum Porter, but I think nailing their two first rounders in Norton and Ed Richards so far. We'll see what happens with the likes of Jamara Ugle-Hagen and uh, more recently, Sam Darcy. But as it currently stands, that would be the year I'd isolate as the Bulldogs' best draft haul. So there you go, guys. That is my take on every club in the AFL's best draft haul since 2013. Again, this is tricky. Like this is the way that I try and research for this is to just scan through the last 10 drafts and try and pick it out. So there's a recipe for a lot of mistakes as we've seen in my rookie draft pick video, but I think I cover this one okay. As always, I welcome your input in the comments section below and there may be cases where we just disagree what the best haul was, but bring it on. I like to learn from you guys and it's good to have fan perspectives as well. So look forward to your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.